All right, so now that you've downloaded um, the data from Moodle, um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a very brief introduction to how to use QGIS, and, and we're not going to do too much. We're just going to open the program, and I'll kind of point at some things. So, so I usually organize every project with um, some kind of master folder, a folder that holds everything. And then inside of that, we'll have um, usually a project folder, or sorry, a project file. And this file is kind of like, um, you know, it's like a playlist in iTunes or some, you know, I guess iTunes is kind of dated now. But it's, it's, um, it's just pointing at the data, right? This is kind of where our map is. But the map is really just layers of data. And so we also have these different files that are stored in like a data folder. So this file is going to kind of pull from this file. And um, these are all shape files. And shape files seem like many, many files, but really all of these behave as one file. And you don't have to learn all about that just yet, but you should just remember that a shape file, which is kind of the most important type of vector file that we'll work with, um, is really a group of files. So go ahead and double click or open um, this project that I've made. Um, nothing will probably happen when you open it because nothing's turned on. But um, hopefully if you double click it, what will happen is you'll get this screen, which means that everything is installed correctly. Um, when it opens, you get this kind of annoying, um, oh, here are the recent projects. And if you haven't worked on any projects, it'll be blank. And then there's this news. And so it's just a bunch of junk that we don't want to look at. So let's pull in a, a piece of data so that we can look at something uh, more interesting. Um, over here is our browser panel, and this is how we kind of navigate um, our data and our files. And so um, whenever you save a project, it'll kind of auto-navigate to here. So our project is saved in our, our kind of master folder for our project. And so it, the project home is, is showing me okay, everything is stored right there. And so that's what I'm looking at. If that doesn't show up for you, what you can do is um, you're going to have to search on your computer to find where the data is. So you just kind of navigate. You know, if it were me, I would go to my desktop. And then I would go here, and it's there as well, right? The reason we save projects is that it automatically maps the thing to where we are. So I'm going to pull in a piece of data. I'm going to pull in the Baltimore census blocks. And I can either click and drag and pull it in, or I can double click it, and it will show up either way. And so when, when we load a shape file, the first thing that happens is um, we see all of the polygons or points or lines or whatever it is. These are polygons, and they just show up. They just kind of pop in there. And QGIS gives them a, a, some random default color. It's usually some very bright obnoxious thing with a strong black border. Um, and so in this case, it's a, a salmon color. So what is our goal today? Um, it's really not going to be very much. What I want to do is show you how to open the attribute table, which is kind of, it's like the Excel behind these shapes, the, the way that these shapes hold information. I want to show you how to make a selection. And I'm just going to point at a few tools, and that'll be it. So. The first thing I mentioned was we have the browser, so this is kind of how you find data. Um, you have a layer panel here, and this is how you manage different layers of data. So if we were going to take this piece of data, the um, police districts, and plop it in here, just click and drag, um, it's another shape file, it's another set of polygons, uh, but now it's another layer on top of another layer. And so just kind of like that playlist these are not actually the pieces of data. They're just how the data is being symbolized, right? So these are just layers um, that we're showing. And we could pull in a file any number of times, you know, if we wanted to symbolize it differently each time. So um, if you want to get rid of a layer, you can right-click or control-click and say remove after you've selected them. Um, and really the kind of right-click and control-click on a Mac is the way we interact with these layers, which represent the data. So I'm going to put the census blocks on top because that has the, some interesting attributes that I want to look at. And the way you look at an attribute table, there's two ways. One way is to open the actual table, and you can right click and go to open attribute table. Another way is you can query each individual um, 
These are called geographies. Each of these shapes is a geography, and I could query each of them individually using this I thing here, identify features. And so if I click that I and I want to go and look at particular blocks, I can go and I can click on them and I can see um, what the population is here because those are attributes I have for those shapes, or I can see how many square miles it is. And so you can interact with individual geographies this way, um, or you know perhaps what we want to do is open up the table. So I'm going to close this identify results, and I want to look at that entire table. So let's open up, right click the layer, and I'm going to say open attribute table. And what this shows me is just a is kind of like Excel, right, or Google Sheets. It's just a table that shows me what I'm looking at, right? So this is just a list. It tells me I have 13,515 total features. Um, so each of these geographies relates to a feature or a record in this attribute table. So now if I wanted to, I, I could use the selection tool, which is another kind of nifty thing here. And I could select some of these perhaps, you know, maybe I want to look at just these, these ones over here. And so I clicked and dragged the box. And now if I was to go back to my attribute table, I would see, okay, some of them are selected now and they're kind of scattered throughout here. So all the blue records are the selected ones. And if I want to look at only the selected records, I can bring them all to the top of the table using this button. And then I can kind of see um, what I have selected. So um, what if I want to select um, only a certain kind of block, right? Maybe I don't want to use my manual mouse and I don't want to select individual records um, because that's time consuming. Maybe I want to select um, only places where we know there are there is a, a non-white population or something like that. Well, I can use a tool called Select by Expression and if it doesn't show up automatically, you can click this caret and find it. It's the one with a little um, kind of sum symbol. And you can say select features by expression. And this is kind of our little builder where we can decide um, that we want to we want to find a certain type of population. And so each of those those uh, attributes has. I'm just going to go back there for a second. Um, has what are called fields, right? So these are the, the rows or what we might call records um, or features. And then these are fields or attributes that go across the top. So each geography or each um, feature has it can have any number of attributes. Um, and so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to make a selection based on an attribute. And so to do that, I might say, I want to find places where white equals zero where we know there's no, there's no um, white population so to do that I might say okay I want to do this select by expression I have my proper layer highlighted and I've said ex select by expression and now what I can do is I can go to my fields and values here and I can say alright return for me a place where white equals and then I'm going to type in zero and now if I say select, I get kind of a funny looking selection. Um, we don't, you know, there's probably a lot of places where the population equals zero as well, right? So um, there are places like, let's check out these docs down here. I bet you if we grab our identify tool and look down here at these docs, we're going to find, uh-huh, yep, there's total population is zero. And so what if we wanted our selection to include places with no, with no white population, but we didn't want it to be zero as well, because zero, there's no one there, and so we don't want that to count. So we, we could make a statement which says, okay, well, we want to know where places are where white equals zero, um, and maybe we also want the population to be greater, the total population to be greater than zero, right? So how would we do that? We could go back to our select by expression. I'm going to deselect everything for a second. I'm going to go back to select by expression. And we go to fields and values. And we're going to say white equals zero. And if we do our selection, that's what we had the first time. But we also want something else to be true. So white equals zero is true is giving us all of these selected records. But now we also want, so 
and we want to have total pop and I'm going to say be greater than zero. So what this means is um, zero is not included. If I said greater than or equal to zero, then nothing would change. So if I hit select now, nothing changes, right? Because zero would be included. But if I say greater than zero, I think what we're going to find when I hit select features is that it diminishes it. So now, I don't know if you saw that difference, but it was kind of interesting, right? So everywhere right now has every block where the population can be anything and white equals zero. But if I say it cannot be zero, it has to be greater than zero, and I make a selection, the selection is going to change. So that's kind of interesting, right? So now we're seeing places where in these census blocks we know that uh, absolutely no white population lives there, but we do know that people do live there. It's greater than zero. Okay, so I want to show you one more type of selection that you can make, and we'll call it a day for this stuff. So I'm going to deselect everything and bring in a different piece of data, which we will look at Maryland counties. So this is one for the whole state, and it's all the counties in Maryland. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to just show you how to do an OR statement, which is very similar. So let's say for some reason we want to be able to select um, two particular counties. Um, the easiest way to do that would be to take our selection tool and go control, you know, you know, click and then hold the shift key and just click another one there. Like that's definitely the easiest way to do it. But if we wanted to do it as a statement, you know, there will be times we want to do that. We don't know exactly where something is. So if we wanted to, to do that same thing as a statement, what we do is we go to select features using an expression. And um, what we can do is say, okay, what is the name, I believe, let's see, name all unique. There we go. So let's say we want to get Baltimore and I think what is that other county called there? Let's get, let's see. This one is called Baltimore County, and this one is called Baltimore City. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that over there, but we're going to make a selection now based on um, it being called Baltimore City or it being called Baltimore County. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll say we want place we want places in this shape file, which is a county shape file where the name equals Baltimore City. But then we, we, we want that to be true. So if we said select, that's going to just grab the city right there. But if we wanted something else to be true as well, we have to use or. Because the takeaway here is that, oopsie, is that or allows two things to be true, whereas and requires two things to be true. So I'll show, it, I'll show you what I mean. So now I'm going to do the same thing. So that has to be true, or this has to be true. So now I want to get the, the county. And so now if I select both of these features are saying, well, yep, I can select that, or you want me to select that. And what it does is it returns uh, a selection or a true value, so to speak, for these two things. Um, if I tried to type in and here, What's confusing is that we think of AND as including many different things, but in logical kind of query speech, it, it usually is kind of like um, it requires two things to be true. So it's a little confusing. But so if I hit AND here and I was going to hit select, nothing will be selected because um, there is no record or no geography in which both of those things are true. So if I hit select, nothing happens, right? Because um, no feature has both of those attributes, right? But or allows both of those to be true. And so um, so both of them can be selected. So that that's it. Um, it might seem confusing. I think the takeaways for today are, you know, we had a bunch of rigmarole just to get your feet wet with the, the core pleth um, conceptual video. Here, what I want you to know is just how a shapefile looks and how it works that there are geographies, there's an attribute table, um, and that these are polygons. Um, we'll work with lines and points in the future. But um, And then the, the, the last thing is 
um, start thinking about the difference between and and or in terms of writing logical statements so that when we're making selections um, it kind of makes sense you know when we decide what things are true and what things are not true so um, hopefully that was helpful the quiz should be pretty easy um, based on these videos I know it's it, they seem probably kind of dense but don't fret about it and come to office hours if you need some help all right thanks